I wanted to start out with, uh, how did you get into the business? Um, I, I, I originally wanted to be a stunt man. And a friend of mine was um, an entertainment attorney. And I just asked him how to do it. And, uh, you know, um, he said, well, I think the first thing you need to do is have pictures. So I went, uh, he gave me the name of this guy named Ian Vaughn, who's a very famous photographer. He actually took the picture of Farrah Fawcett in the one piece bathing suit that was so famous back in the day. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I went to his office and uh, met him and, you know, uh, started taking some pictures. And then I, I had made a deal with him where I could pay him because uh, he was really expensive, um, pay him in two payments. And I was making the last payment to him. And uh, I met this guy in an elevator who kept staring at me in the elevator. And I was like, dude, like wrong guy. And he was with this other guy, this other, this other guy was with him. And I, I'm thinking, yeah, dude, wrong guy. Not, you know, I know this is Hollywood, but, you know. And he goes, no, you got a great face. You should be in movies. And I said, well, the funny thing is, I'm just uh, paying uh, off the photographer that just took some pictures. And this was like on a Friday. And it was before I was going to work. And he said, well, come in and see me on Monday morning. So I did. And he signed me that morning. That's amazing. Yeah. And what year was this? 1980. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I saw on your IMDb where you're from uh, Maryland. I am from Lutherville, Maryland. Well, I live in Silver Spring now. Oh, okay. Well, I know exactly where that is. Yeah, I'm like right on Georgia Avenue, right there on, uh, on in, uh, downtown. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And I do a lot of the uh, a lot of acting work myself in the area. Nice. But, um, yeah. So uh, I, I've seen, like I said uh, in our phone conversation earlier, I've seen a lot of your work. I've seen uh, the Hamburger movie. Oh God. <laughs> I saw, seen that in uh, Cheerleader Camp. Okay. And also, I think the most famous though would be uh, Roadhouse. Yeah, Roadhouse or Batman Returns. So how, how, what are your, what's your experience? What was your experience uh, working on Roadhouse? How was that? Well, uh, you know, Roadhouse was great because, you know, I was, a, I'm a bouncer. I was a, I'm a bouncer in real life. So they called me on the phone and, and my, my, my uh, agent at the time. And he goes, so listen, I got this part. He goes, um, would you like to be in a movie with Patrick Swayze? And I went, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I always want to work. And he goes, well, it's Patrick Swayze and Sam Elliott. And I think he said at the time it was supposed to be Robert Duvall playing the head bad guy, but he was stuck on, uh, not stuck, but he was doing Lonesome Dove. Oh yeah. So, I remember that. Yeah. So um, they, they, it was uh, Ben Gazzara. So when I got the job, I went in for the first interview. I got a call back before I even left the place. They called my agent, wanted to bring me back. And uh, I got the call back. And uh, when I was driving home, he called me again, paid me again. And he goes, okay, well, you got the job. And he, I go, oh, that's great. And he told me how much money they wanted to pay me. And I go, wait a minute, let me get this straight. I get to be in a movie with Patrick Swayze and Sam Elliott. I get to fight and not get hurt. And they're going to pay me how much money? <laughs> I said, yeah, that's a no brainer. Yeah. Hard to pass that one up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I saw, I like the uh, scene where, uh, well, uh, Marshall Teague is uh, doing the stuff with the pool cue, and I think he whacked you a couple of times with that pool cue. Yeah, he actually clipped me a couple of times in the fight. Um, I actually had, uh, 
I can't remember exactly how it happened, but um, I ended up having to go to the hospital because I, I uh, uh, had a minor subluxation of my wrist. But, you know, I was like the only real bouncer in the movie. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and it was, were you doing stunts at that point too, or was it just the solely experience from the bouncing part of it? No, no. I mean, it was a, it was a stunt fight in that movie, but no, I, I, I had started in the, in the, the business doing um, mostly acting roles that had stunts involved because I was like one of the only guys my size that could, you know, fall and fight and, drive cars and motorcycles and horses and that kind of stuff right that's awesome <laughs> well those those fights look badass in that movie i mean I, I don't know if you know but they're remaking it now they're uh, gonna have jake gyllenhaal play uh the dalton role yeah i just heard that uh the other day a friend of mine told me well good luck with it i hope they you know you know, uh, it goes over well for him, you know? Yeah, it's funny. I, they were talking about Ronda Rousey playing that role at first, and then they changed it to uh, to Jake. So who knows yeah. who will end up doing it? <laughs> yeah, it was a couple years ago, and, and, you know, I thought that would be really cool. I That that movie, you know, I got to meet um, one of my one of my best friends working on that movie. And um, uh, she, you know, we were still friends to this day. And she's actually hired me a couple of times because she married a very famous stunt coordinator. So Julie Michaels, she's a great gal. And who does she play in the film? She plays um, Ben Gazzara's girlfriend. Oh, yeah, the one who gets on the stage. Yeah, okay. Right, right. Nice, very cool. That's awesome. That's really cool. And so it, were uh, Patrick Swayze and Sam Elliott, were they a lot of fun to work with? They were, and they were great guys. Um, Sam especially, but Patrick was a great guy. Um, you know, the, the cast, I loved working with all those guys. And, and uh it, it just was a really uh, memorable experience and it was shot in uh i worked in may june and july of 88 and it was during my birthday so i celebrated my birthday working on that my 28th birthday working on that show that, that's amazing that's actually how old i am now so i couldn't even oh, imagine <laughs> that would just the opportunity to do that would have just been amazing I, i've always wanted to do a film like that that had a lot of bar heavy uh like fight choreography like that it was great i mean uh the you know the stunt coordinator and the stunt guys you know i got to work with a lot of my my favorite stunt guys that i'd worked with in the past and uh, so it was, it was, you know, it was a lot of fun. Tony Epper was a stunt guy on that, right? Yeah. And, and, and uh, um, one of the other Epper gals and one of the other Epper brothers. And uh, I mean, it was, you know, if you looked at that, um, the stunt, the stunt people on the movie, it's a who's who, you know, of stunt history. That's kind of how I feel when I watched the John Wayne movie, The Cowboys, and all the wrestlers. Oh, yeah. It was just like well, a master class. You got Dick Farnsworth. You got, like, the Eppers. You got um, Henry Wills. You got all of them. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, they just did the 50th anniversary. It's a great YouTube video of the cast being interviewed. You should check it out. I will. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge John Wayne fan. Uh, you know, I tell the story my... My dad passed away before my seventh birthday. And growing up, you know, I didn't really have any male, that many male role models in my life. So I, uh, I, I'd watch John Wayne movies and that's how I kind of grew up. 
Were, were you one of the ones who uh, sent Brewster and hate mail after uh, he killed his character? No, but but I, I, I worked with Bruce Dern on a movie and they started the movie, but we never finished it. And the first day on the set, we, we were playing a bunch of uh, kids on a, a track team, high school track team. And Bruce was in the van, in the... Uh, not the van, the the school bus with us, and we, we cut, and I got everybody at the same time to go, hey Bruce, why did you shoot John Wayne in the back? <laughs> and without missing a beat, he said, he said because he deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> we all cracked up. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I would I would have given to have been on the set that day that, that they shot that. Yeah, you know, um, when he did his last movie, The Shootist, the day he got killed, they had like a couple of hundred guests because they wanted to see John Wayne die. You know, because he only got he only got killed in like four or five movies. Right. So it was a, I mean, it was a big deal. Yeah, my dad saw him in Boston in a parade uh, one time right before he died. Yeah, he he was um, being interviewed by the uh, Harvard um, the the Harvard uh, I want I want to say figgy pudding, but that can't be it. Hasty pudding was it? Hasty pudding. Hasty pudding. Thank you. Thank you. I had a stroke recently and some days I can't remember who I am. Well, I, I'm sorry to hear that. I actually saw where there was a uh, GoFundMe uh, set up. Yeah. Your son had set it up. I actually donated to it last year. Oh, well, thank you. My, yeah. Yeah, my, my son, Cole, he uh, got that all set up for me. Um, I had had a, uh, I had gotten an infection in my foot and they ended up taking my foot. Well, four days or five days after that, I suffered a stroke. Oh my goodness. They, did, they didn't diagnose it for like three, three or four days. And so, but I'm, I'm getting better now. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, I really am. I was hoping so. Cause I, I'd seen he wrote a really nice bio for you on the description. Yeah. And I was like, well, I really hope that things are getting better. Cause like I said, I donated back at, I think it was November of last year. And I, oh, wow. I was hoping that things had gotten a lot better and I actually shared it on my have Instagram and Facebook. And I encouraged a oh. lot of people to donate as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, no that, problem uh, at all. It was, you know, it was a help, you know, helpful. My, um, you know, my wife had to uh, take time off of work to take care of me for the longest time. She was at the hospital and, and uh, she was videoing, you know, what was going on in the hospital. And uh, she wouldn't let me watch it till after I'd gotten out of the hospital and been out for a little while. And she goes, because it's kind of hard to watch. And I watched it. I was like, wow. I mean, there was she would she would ask me, you know, I go, hey, what? you know, what, why am I here? You know, and I, I guess when I first uh, suffered the stroke and stuff, I didn't know who she was. I couldn't remember my son's names, my grandkids. I didn't remember them. And so, you know, but, you know, she, uh, to her credit, she was there at the hospital almost every day. And, you know, um worked really hard with me to to bring me back you know well i'm really glad that you had her and the support of uh of your kids as well oh absolutely sure. yeah i mean there's there's nothing like having having your family if you don't have your family and your friends what do you have <laughs> well yeah i have you know i have three sons so you know they're uh you know they've they've been uh you know, my whole life changed um, when I met my wife. So, how did you all meet? 
Um, I, I used to be the, the bouncer at this country Western nightclub in um, LA and I had gotten shot there like a few years prior to like five years prior to me meeting her. And I came in to the bar and she was at the end of the bar with a, a really good friend of mine. And it was like I was struck by a lightning bolt. And my my friend, her name is Valencia, she's, you know, dark hair, really good looking gal and really good friend. And they were sitting and I, I went back to, uh, went through the bar, went to the back where we used to, all the single guys used to hang out. And the guys back there were talking about my wife. And <clears throat> they were like, yeah, one of them was going, yeah, I'm thinking about maybe going up and asking her to dance. And I go, well, it's too late. And I went up and asked her to dance. And uh, we were dancing to a George Strait song and right in the middle of it, and this is completely out of character for me, I kissed her. I was pretty much done for. Hey, well, it seems to have worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 30 some odd years, and, you know. Well, that's a great story. It's like one of those moments where it could have been hit or miss either way. Could have gone really oh, bad yeah. or really good. She could have teed off on me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing my luck, it would have gone the bad way had I tried something. Ah. So. <laughs> no, I guess, I guess it was meant to be. I do. I believe things are like, especially in, in cases like that, I do believe things are meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. I had actually, uh, that was in um, that was in June of eighty nine, and uh, Roadhouse was just getting ready to come out. So, so she uh, she found out that you were in the business. How did she How did she think feel about that? Um. Well, I mean, you know, it was a it was a novelty. You know, she she, you know. I mean, she supported me through, you know, I mean, you know, was there emotionally to support me, you know, through the, you know, the, those, those years. And, you know, it was different, you know, but I mean, I, I worked and then, uh, you know, cause me, I'm, I'm sort of like a guy that sells red bow ties when it comes to the acting business, you know, you know, there's not a whole lot of roles for somebody like me. So, you know, I, I worked and, and uh, for the first couple of years, I just kind of, you know, lounged around and just wanted to wait for the work, but that didn't work out. So I ended up going back to work bouncing and, and uh, I actually worked for her father owns a construction company and I actually went to work for them. And I know nothing about construction. I mean, I know more now. But, you know, got to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I bet you had some uh, some crazy stories uh, bouncing as well. I'm sure there was some never a dull moment. I mean, you mentioned getting shot. Yeah. Yeah. I was working at that country nightclub I was talking about. And two, uh, two guys came in and they were not um, dressed right. And they had a chemically altered perspective. So in the ensuing conversation, they decided to go a different way. So they lost, left, and came back a few hours later, shot up the place. My God. Yeah. I bet my uh, I bet my buddy uh, Matt he lives in San Fernando Valley. I bet he knows that exact bar. He's he seems like the type that would have frequented a bar like that. Well, it's been closed for a number of years, but you know if he's in the San Fernando Valley, that's 
that's where we were working. Yeah, Matt Birch. His name, his name is Matt Birch. He does some acting as well. Oh, okay. He and uh, Neil Stewart, stuntman, actor Neil Stewart, he, they're good buddies. They, they used huh. to do that together. Nice. But, um, yeah, I got a friend in, in D.C. who works in the clubs in Adams Morgan, and he's a big, big guy. And, and sometimes I'll get him and I'll say, just tell me some some of your bouncer stories. I was like, that stuff, because I did security for maybe a year, but it was uh, just like event stuff. Right. Yeah what I would consider like the real deal. I was pretty much just wanding people coming into concerts. What company did you work for? It was called uh, Event Staffing Inc. It was in uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Huh. And, yeah, uh, I, I, when I first started, um, I got on with a company called CSC at the time. They're one of the biggest uh, um, event staff companies in the world. And I got to work, you know, I got to got to work a lot of great events and I, uh, you know, got to travel around a little bit and, you know, I worked, uh, you know, with a lot of, uh, you know, pretty famous people. And then I, I got a job uh, running the security for all the shows at the Ventura County Fairgrounds. And I worked there for 30 years, every August. So, and that was all unarmed security or was that armed? No, that was unarmed. Yeah, I think the security my buddy did was the same way. And I asked him the other day, I said, you know, have you ever, have you ever lost a fight? And he, he's telling me about all these fights he got in, you know, working the, the clubs. He told me, he said he's never lost a fight. And I believe it. The guy's huge and built and he used to play arena football. I said, well, I believe it. I said, I wouldn't mess with you. <laughs> well, I've. I can't even tell you how many ruckuses I've been in. Oh, uh, fortunately, when I first started working for this company, I partnered up with a guy named Bill Corey, and he had a uh, uh, first-degree black belt in a martial art called Kung Fu San Su, and his brother was a grandmaster. And uh, we started training together, and I and I ended up, you know, working with. Uh, working with them and, and studying for a long time. Um, so I wanted to get, you know, I wanted to be able to take care of myself, but, you know, I've been in so many ruckuses, my, my, I, you know, I'd be telling these stories and my kids were, you know, and even my wife and kids were going, Oh yeah, this is, you know, this is bullshit. Right. <laughs> so I had the West Nile virus and I got out of the hospital. Some of my buddies were visiting me at my house. And we were telling war stories and my wife came walking through and she goes, wait, wait, she goes, you mean to tell me those stories he's been telling us all these years are true because you guys are telling some of the same stories, only different, you know, cause I had left some stuff out and uh, they go, yeah, you can't make this stuff. Up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, and we used to, we used to have this, uh, um, every year we'd get together and go remember all our buddies that had passed away. And one year I took my son, Cole, my youngest, and he went up and, and well, when we first got there. One of my partners is a guy named Lamont Williams. And he's like, he's the black version of me, big guy. He's got three or four different black belts in different things. So, you know, we come walking in and Lamont, big guy, loud. Hey, Cole, come in here and say hi to your uncle Lamont. I bet you didn't know your dad hung with the Crips. Because <laughs> he was an ex-Crip. Wow. I bet your son so, was like, what? <laughs> he was. And then a little bit later, he had gone into the kitchen because Lamont is always doing the cooking. And uh, he's a wonderful cook. And he goes up and he goes, hey, Uncle Lamont. He goes, those stories that my dad tells, are they all true? He goes, what story do you want to know about? Here, taste this barbecue sauce. <laughs> what stories? And he'd start rattling them off. He goes, yeah, they're true. Yeah, they're true. Yeah, that one's true. He goes, did you guys really stand off? 
a bunch of bikers because they called you the N-word? He goes, yeah. He goes, your dad was the first one to throw a blow. Wow. So, yeah. What was the craziest uh, moment you would say that happened uh, aside from the shooting incident in your time doing that? Oh, well, I got stabbed once. That wasn't good. But um, I guess my, my, my favorite moment wasn't um, actually while I was working. I had done my, – my buddy was – well, both of my buddies, two of my buddies, um, Warren K. and um, another guy, Bob. Uh, I know I was going to forget his name because of the stroke. Um, anyway, they both worked for Bruce Springsteen. So um, uh, I had worked with both of those guys and done a number of shows with Bruce. So back in the early to mid nineties, um, my buddy Warren called me, he goes, Hey, I'm at the Sagebrush Cantina. Bruce Springsteen is here. You need to come down and say hello. And I didn't live too far. So I got my car, drove down there. And this was right after, must've been early nineties because it was right after Roadhouse had come out. And there I am talking to Bruce Springsteen. Hey, Travis, how are you? Oh, good to see you, Bruce. People are coming up asking me for my autograph. And I'm talking to them. They walk away and Bruce goes, hey, Travis, you handled yourself really good with those fans there. Really proud of you. And I went, well, geez, Bruce said, praise from Caesar, because I learned that from you. And it was true. But it was just really funny. Here I am standing next to arguably one of the greatest rock and roll stars in the world. And these guys are coming up talking to me. It was just, it was pretty a surreal moment. Oh, I bet so. That's, that's amazing, though. I mean, that's... Uh... I'm, and he wasn't jealous at all by that. He was not. Absolutely not. He was play, paying me my props. And he was, I think he was really proud that one of his guys, you know, that had worked with him, you know. And he had just seen a movie that I did. I did a movie of the week with Craig T. Nelson. And the director was a friend of Bruce's. And Bruce had actually seen the movie at a screening. And he told me I did a really good job. So, you know, like I said, it's just really kind of a surreal moment. No, that's amazing. That really is. I mean, especially when someone of his caliber, I'm sure. I mean, I couldn't even imagine the feeling. And I, and I oh. actually heard of the sagebrush too, actually. My friend goes there quite a bit. So when you said that, I was like, oh, I know exactly what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. I, I, I used to go there back in the day when it was, you know, at night. It was kind of a rough place. But they cleaned it up. And now it's like, you know, bands and yuppies. And I used to take my family there to eat all the time. Well, were, were any of those uh, those bouncer moves that, that you had in Roadhouse, did that carry over when you did Three Ninjas? <laughs> yeah, well, kind of. You know, that was, that was a fun movie. Um, you know, I used to walk Hulk Hogan to the ring. Oh, really? We did a lot of, yeah, we did a lot of wrestling stuff. And um, Hulk... Uh, you know, when I got on the movie, you know, I went up and Hulk was like, hey, big man, how are you? And, you know, it was kind of a cool thing. I actually had a uh, magazine from uh, WrestleMania 2. And in the pic, there's a picture of me walking Hulk to the ring. And he autographed it for my kids. Do you still have this photo? I'd love to see it. Yeah, I do. Um, it's actually in the, the magazine. I have to find the magazine. I don't know. We just moved. So 
uh, I'm not exactly sure where it where it is, but if I get it, I'll take a picture of it and uh, send it to you. I would, I'd really appreciate that. I'd love to see it because I'm actually going to be uh, going to his bar in Clearwater in a couple weeks. He's going to be there for his karaoke night. Oh wow! Yeah, I've always wanted to uh, to meet him. So I, I, while I'm down here in Florida for the month, I'm just going to roll over there and hope for the best. The great thing about working on that movie, uh, Three Ninjas, um, one, um, you know, I like working with the guys I was working with. The three you know the three doofuses they always called us yeah and um the other was you know while we were there um one day a bunch of pro wrestlers showed up like randy savage um the guy they used to call the big show oh yeah paul um, white paul white when he was just getting started um uh Kevin uh Sullivan um Elizabeth Randy Savage I think I said mm -hmm. and they had a uh they needed to get around a couple places so I I I I stole a John Deere and would drive him around <laughs> I I stole the John Deere from one of the production guys that's that so, but it was a great, you know, it was a great thing. You know, it was a lot of fun. And how was working with uh, with Jim Barney? Amazing. Amazing. That guy is so smart. Um it uh, we were we were we were on the set one day. We were shooting outside and these really cool clouds came in. And this guy knew more about clouds than any human being I had ever met. And he could talk. And he was he was nothing like the Avern guy. Very smart. Uh, it turns out he went to some high flutin Eastern college. Great guy. Yeah, he was a Shakespearean actor before he started doing Ernest. Right. And he was he did some while we were working. I was blown away. And, uh, you know, Lonnie Anderson was just salt of the earth. I told her my Burt Reynolds story and she started to tear up. So. What, what, what's the Burt Reynolds story? Well, in the beginning of my career, I had to go in and read for Burt Reynolds for one of those Steven Spielberg amazing stories that he was going to direct. And I was like, holy crap. This is Hooper. This is, you know, this is one of my favorite actors. And I was nervous. And he could tell. But he just took his time with me. We chatted. He was so kind and so giving. And he knew that I was nervous. I didn't get the part, but I remember that from that day on to always be kind to people when, you know, and when I told that story to Lonnie Anderson, she goes, yeah, that's how we, you know, we remember him. And, he, you know, cause this was after they had broken up. Right. But she was really, you know, like I said, she started to tear up. A little bit. Nice lady. Okay. And I can see you this time. It's awesome. <laughs> well, nice to nice to meet you when we can see each other. <laughs> Pleasure is all mine. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much again. And I think this one is timed at 40 minutes too. I don't know. Zoom used to let you do it for like two hours back in 2020, but now they're like pandemic's over. We're gonna cut you down to 40. So right. anyway. Well, you were telling me about the premiere of Roadhouse. You were telling me there was a story about that. Right. So we we decided that the day the movie came out, a bunch of us were going to go to Universal Studios where the theaters are there. And we were going to go to the first the, the first 
I think it was early after uh, early evening um, screening, right? So we go watch the movie. You know, people loved it. So we come walking out and we're in the lobby. Now it's Julie Michaels, um, me, a couple of the other guys from the movie, Marshall Teague, um, Benny Urquidez. You know, I mean, it's the cast of characters, basically. And everybody that's coming out of the theater and going in is asking everybody for their autograph. All except me. Like, not one person said, hey, you're in the movie. Not one. Wow. And I was laughing. And Julie goes, what's so funny? As we were getting ready to walk out, I go, not one person recognized me. She goes, what? I go, yeah. I said, that's hysterical. And she goes, well, you don't seem to be upset about it. I go, how can I be upset? It's, it's no big deal. I mean, I was wearing Wranglers and a, you know, a, a button up shirt and, a, you know, a, um, a cowboy hat. And my hair was really short and I had glasses on. So I don't know, but yeah, but it was really funny. You know, yeah, no, but nobody, not even after the movie, nobody still. No. Nope. Wow. No. Nope. I don't know. That would that would have made some people really upset. That would have like hurt their ego or something. But you know what? I I I, I didn't get in the business to stroke my ego. I mean, I'm really glad when I do good work, but I I mean, I really have very little interest in the process of celebrity, yeah. you know, especially after being around so many before I started getting some. Well, did and you I ever just, have an experience with any celebrity that wasn't so pleasant, whether it be working as security or working on a film with them or? Well, yeah, there's, there's been a couple. Um, and out of the kindness of my heart, I won't mention any names, but yeah, it's, there've been a couple, you know, yeah. um, like, uh, you know, I'll say this cause I've said it before, like Ben Gazzara, I didn't, I'm not a nice guy or wasn't, and I don't like to speak ill of the dead. But I just, you know, the, the polar opposite of him and Sam Elliott, who I think was a bigger star anyway, and Patrick, who became a mega star, you know. Right. Just night and day. Well, night that's good that he was cast in that role then. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he had to do much acting. Yeah, some people are good for they're they're they have a type for a reason. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't but, know what that says know, about me though. I'm always cast as a villain, so I don't know. <laughs> I've played good guys, I've played bad guys. Uh, as long as they pay me. That's that's right. Well, cuz you know, I'm obviously doing it for a paycheck, you know. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the way to go. Well, you know, I I have to say the first movie I ever saw you in was uh, Casper meets Wendy when I was a kid. Oh God! And then <laughs> the scene where you're talking to Ben Stein and you're eating the donuts and you're talking to Ben Stein that always sticks out to me when I think about that movie. He, you know, I I'm a great admirer of his. Um, he has when he's just being interviewed. He has a lovely way of turning a phrase and to work with him I was just so excited you know and I get excited when I'm working with people you really have seen and you know their work um my my tagline when I meet someone of notoriety in the business if I get a chance, I always go, it's 
really great to meet you. And I just wanted to thank you for entertaining me, you know, because even if they're a great bad guy, great good guy, it's that process of being entertained that I think, you know, that's what I wanted to do. You know, well, for sure. Well, I would definitely say you succeeded because I mean, I definitely, you're, you're very memorable in everything I've ever seen. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And, you know, um, working on that, that particular project, um, the director was a great guy. And I actually worked for him after that. I worked that way. He directed Three Ninjas. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sean McNamara, right? Sean McNamara. Sean, he, he had a wonderful way when, when you're finishing this scene, he'd go, cut, genius. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Great guy. I always wondered what, what he'd been doing lately. I'm not the best at keeping up with everybody. Yeah, it's hard to. When life happens, it's hard to do it sometimes. You know, life happens, and I got kids, I got a wife, you know, been through a lot, you know. For sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, my wife has been telling me for years I need to write a book. And I've recorded a bunch of tapes that a friend of mine is is uh, helping me write. Well, I would definitely love if you would write that book. I would love to buy it. I really would. Well, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I still got a couple. I got a couple more tapes here I need to do and send off to him. But he's a great guy. He's written two books. He actually we met because he interviewed interviewed me for one of the, the one of his books the first book that he wrote What's about the horror movies oh horror movies okay yeah i knew you were going to ask me you can probably look it up his name is ronnie angel ronnie angel okay i'll write that down he, he's he's actually he's a writer he's an actor and he's a professional wrestler oh wow <laughs> and we've become really good friends over the years i wonder if uh i wonder if he knows like hulk as well i mean i know that circle is really small you know i know he's worked with a lot of great guys he he's from originally i think he's from washington and he worked up there and he worked in canada and you know so it wouldn't surprise me who he knows oh it's no telling uh, he probably knows quite a few. We we always end up talking wrestling and stuff. All right, are you a, a big wrestling fan yourself? You know, I am, but I I worked a lot of wrestling events. You know, WrestleMania two. Um, I worked. I used to mostly worked out of L.A., but I would travel up to Fresno because the guys who the road agents for the WWF asked me to come up there and help them. And my, my company had the contract. So, you know, went up there, um, LA, San Diego, kind of all over. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of the 90s wrestling myself. I don't really care for it as much now because I feel like it's a lot of talk and not a lot of action. Right, well, I just saw something the other day where the 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 the, the uh, it's like thirteen minutes of wrestling, and they just put on the first um, TV shows that Vince didn't have anything to do with, and it was like forty three minutes. So it's my understanding they're gonna get away from the sports entertainment and get back to wrestling. Good, good. I'm so glad to hear it. <laughs> My favorite was always Bam Bam Bigelow. 
Really? Yeah, I love Bam Bam. I um during one of the wrestling matches at um the LA Sports Arena, Dr. D David Schultz wanted to get into it with Mr. T. Well, Mr. T's bodyguard at the time was literally nobody you wanted to mess with. So, because I was one of the supervisors and, you know, knew the road agents and stuff, Chief J. Strongbow called me back into the dressing room and he said, listen, I think Dr. D. David Schultz is going to come out and try and get into a ruckus with Mr. T. So we rallied the boys. During a match, he came walking out, got to the end of the aisle. And before he, he started to, to talk to him, but before it got to that point, the four of us, or five of us, grabbed him, took him up off his feet, turned him over, took him backstage, put him on the ground, and police officer named John Dole handcuffed him and hogtied him. <laughs> when he finished, he threw his arms up and went, tie. Well, I, I was laughing my ass off. So, yeah. And then some of the wrestlers started to come out of the wrestling room, Tony Atlas. And we're like, hey, hey, Tony, it's okay. He's not hurt. But we, had, we ended up having to leave the property. Now, Dr. D tells that story and he says, guns were drawn. And I'm going, no, there weren't. I saw, a, you know, great, what is that? Great North Wrestling, the website. Yeah. And he did an interview there. And I commented, I just commented, I was there that night and I don't remember it happening exactly like he said yeah but so, well i'm glad you did because a lot of people would hear that and they would think you know they trust the guy himself and they're you know they 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 know that they know people are going to believe it so they'll just sometimes they'll just rattle off and say a bunch of stuff that's not true but, yeah well they 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 went in and got his bag and he and tony atlas left the building you know but it was you know it could have been touch and go because he's nobody I've, you know, and I'm, I'm not generally afraid of, you know, much, you know, um, but it was not somebody I really wanted to mess with. Right. So we had the right approach. Nobody got hurt. He didn't get a chance to do anything, you know, and I think we handled it in the most uh, professional way we could. I would say so, yeah. And nobody really, like you said, nobody really got hurt. So, I mean, it was a win. And he was actually, when we got him backstage, he was actually very, he was calm and cool and collected, you know. He was not, he wasn't upset with us at all, you know. Yeah, I mean, he knew it was going to happen. I mean, he, I mean, and a lot of times I've heard that, like, you know, you know, they'll get all uh, like worked up like that. And then you take them backstage and they're like, Oh, that was a good show. You know, it was all for, it was all for right. like, entertainment. Right. So, yeah, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I was walking um, Roddy Piper and uh, Bob Orton from the ring and some guy up in the rafters threw a D cell battery and cracked me right in the head. Oh, geez. I could barely make it into the dressing room area and i ended up um passing out you know and i ended up having to go to the hospital and i got a concussion damn people well and this was in the was this in the 90s uh 80s yeah people were a different breed back then i've, I've heard it's just different hey it was wild i mean it was it was a ruckus you know some of the fans just were way into it. You they know? think it's real. I, I I still know people to this day that'll 
they'll get so mad about it. They'll see a match. Ah, oh, I kicked that guy's ass. I'm like, well, first of all, you're, you're not the one who'd be kicking his ass. He'd be kicking your ass. Right. And second of all, you know, you realize this shit's scripted, right? <laughs> and they're just like, oh, well, no, it's not. Well, well, you know. So, you know, and let me tell you, there were some guys, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to mess with. And I, you know, I ain't afraid of nothing that walks, talks, chews, spits, or farts, you know. You know, back in the day, I, you know, um, but there were a couple guys I was like, so when they came and told us about this, I was like, yeah, I, yeah this is not something I want to, I want to go bad. No, no. So it didn't, you know, Well, it did. That's because there was professionals handling the situation. I believe so. <laughs> well, you know, one of the guys uh, that was involved in this was my buddy Warren K. He's, you know, toured with Springsteen. Uh, John Mellencamp, um, Billy Joel, uh, Paul Simon, um, uh, who's the guy? God, that's what I hate about having a stroke. Um, very famous old rocker, started in the 60s. If you said a song that he did, I might be able to help. Oh, well, he was he was also an actor. And he did a movie with Chris Christopherson where he played like Billy the Kid. Let me see. Let me Google it real quick. It's um, Bob Dylan. Oh, Bob Dylan. Oh, wow. Bob Dylan. Oh, yeah. He's working okay. with Bob Dylan. So I've done, you know, and I've worked with him a lot. And uh, Warren, it was Warren K, me, my partner, Bill Corey, guy named Mark Zellman, all big guys. Uh, Bill Corey was my partner for many years. You know, it's the one that got me into Kung Fu San Su. And then the police officer that was with us from the beginning, guy named John Dole, who's, you know, I used to be his roommate. He's still my friend now. He was on, he's the second longest member of the LAPD SWAT team. And he retired, and now he's worked the last eight or nine years as a Burbank Airport policeman. So he's got some creds. Definitely, yeah. Well, how was working with Bob Dylan? I've heard he's kind of temperamental towards fans. I, no, I, I, you know, Warren said great things about him. You know, liked working with him, you know. Yeah, I've just heard he doesn't like to sign autographs. Like he he doesn't he thinks it's cheap to sign for fans. Yeah, I I think it's more or less he doesn't want to be put up on a different pedestal. You know. Yeah. I've heard you know John Denver did the same thing. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I worked I worked some shows. <laughs> <laughs> I worked some shows with him and he he flat out said I don't sign autographs because it puts me on a different level and I think we're all you know nice guy though well that's admirable though and you know honestly what do people do when they get autographs they take it and try to sell it and make a buck themselves off of someone some, else. Of, some of them do yeah some of them do I would rather have a personal experience like that no one else had with that person than I would to have something that everyone else has, which is a signature, me personally. But yeah, I worked at a nightclub in LA, well, outside LA, called Montana's. And we used to have big country acts come in there. Trace Adkins, um Brad Paisley, you know, people of you know notoriety. And um you know they they Please sign autographs. I actually had taken a guitar that belonged to my son, Jake, because he wanted Brad Paisley's autograph. And Brad was like, sure, Trav, no problem. And signed it. It was great. You know, people that, you know, do that. And I worked with Trace Adkins that night and then worked with him when he came to play uh, the Ventura County Fairgrounds which, you know, I ran the security there. 
for all the big shows. And uh, Trace remembered me. It was really nice. The year I got the West Nile virus, my son took over. My son, Jake, took over and ran it for me. And he wore my ID tag. And he walked up to, he was walking uh, Trace back to his motorhome. And he goes, hey, Trace, my name's Jake McKenna. My dad runs a security here. Here's, a, you know, here's his ID. He's in the hospital right now with a West Nile virus. And Trace was like, hey, I remember that guy. Well, you tell your daddy, old Trace said, hope he gets well soon. So that was kind of neat. That's really nice. Yeah, great guy. And then he came again a few years later and he was really, hey, how you feeling? You know, he, he remembered, you know? Yeah. Well, Your I son's a great awesome. kid. <sighs> the one time I worked security uh, for a concert, it was one of his. I was at the base of the stage and he was singing. Oh, there you go. So my job was to keep people from jumping the stage. They thought people might do that. So. Yeah, they, they do. They will do it. Yeah. But he was awesome that night and no one jumped the stage and it was all good. But yeah, he, he seemed to be a really nice guy that night. I was doing the Ventura County Fairgrounds and my my sons were working with me and my wife used to come and see the shows, right? So she's, um, you know, in the front of the barricade. And I, I can't remember the, the, the actor, I mean the, the singer's name but he comes out and he's singing and he's on the thing and he leans over he leans over and he grabs my wife's hand and starts singing to her i looked over at my buddy and i go that's a crying shame he goes what i go now nah, i gotta kill him <laughs> <laughs> he busted up laughing uh, and the rest is history <laughs> yeah that was the day he lost his life <laughs> yeah there's a lot of you know it's, uh, you know I've had some uh, I have had uh, quite frankly I have had an amazing life you know um, one of my favorite uh, stories was I used to run the backstage for the Hollywood Bowl. And we did, you know, all kinds of people came through there. My favorite story is of Sammy Davis Jr. I was his guy while he was there. He was the most kind, decent, thoughtful man I'd ever met in my entire life. And he, he was getting out of the limo and his manager named Jolly Brown, he goes, Jolly, is this my guy? He says, right, Sam. I said, nice to meet you, Mr. Davis. He goes, hey, call me Sammy. And I go, I couldn't. I go, I'm so enamored. You know, you're, you're one of my favorite actors and singers, performers. And the whole time I would call him. Finally, the last night when he was leaving, I said, goodbye, Sam. He goes, only took you two days. <laughs> nice guy just just really salt of the earth that's amazing he seemed to be uh i remember him from that on the family episode with archie when when he was getting in the car and i was walking with him he turned around and he goes hey lean down here i leaned down and kissed me right on the cheek <laughs> i turned about 12 shades of red he goes gotcha <laughs> But great guy. That's awesome. So did he smoke? Was he a, a heavy smoker? You know, I don't, I don't really recall. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. Uh, great guy, though. I mean, he, he, we got to his dressing room, which was backstage. And he goes, I want you, because they put out a big, smorgasbord of stuff he goes travis you're hungry you come back in here 
you get yourself something to eat. I go, oh, I couldn't do that. He goes, no. He goes, you're my guest. Just salt the That's earth. amazing. No one else would have done that, too. And that's, that's amazing. No. There are other acts I was told I couldn't even look at. Oh, jeez. Don't look her in the eye. What? Yeah. I'm going to protect you, but uh, you can't look at me, you know, like, it's just... <laughs> Very famous singer-songwriter. And he didn't want me to look him in the eye. I was like, yeah, whatever. Kind of soured me on him. Yeah, that, that's just, it's not necessary. You know, we're all human beings. It, it shouldn't even be like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I did have another question about a film that you did, uh, Batman Returns. Yeah. How did it feel getting shot by Danny DeVito? Well, you know, it was great because, you know, I, you know, it was me and this other guy, Doug Jones, who played, we, we stood next to each other. We literally looked like the number 10. <laughs> was, Doug is, you know, Doug is 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he weighs about a, a buck and a half, maybe. And I was laughing when we were putting our wardrobe on. I go, look, Doug, Look in the mirror. We look like the number 10. He just thought that was his circle. Um, so, and that again, stunt coordinator I knew um, got me the job. Um, really great job. Got to work with great people. Um, it was one of the best experiences, you know, I ever had. And uh, it was so much fun. And I just, I think about some of the things that I've got to do and it kind of blows me away. Cause like, just a kid from Ruth the Real Maryland, you know? Well, was that actually the, you that, that wrote it? I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah, they, they came to me one day and it was Tim Burton. He said he wanted to talk to me. And he goes, hey, listen, we need to, in this scene, we really need to ramp it up a little bit. How would you feel about the penguin killing you? And I was like, yeah, okay. I go, it's not going to change my deal, is it? Like, I'm still going to get to work the rest of my contract. <laughs> my contract. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, yeah. Well, what do you think of this? I go, well, yeah. I think it's a great way to die. He goes, can you swim? I go, like a fish. He goes, we're going to shoot you. How about you roll down the ramp into the water? I went, yeah, okay. Now. Everybody else who had gone in that water was wearing a polar thermal wetsuit. Not the fat guy. <laughs> so we shot it. The first time we shot it was a Friday night. They shoot me, walks over, kicks me. I roll down. I hit that water. Well, the set was refrigerated because we had real penguins. The water was like 52 degrees. It sucked the air right out of my chest. And I was face down trying to hold my breath, hold my breath. They said, oh, when you hit the water, stay face down. We'll have somebody come over and tap you tell you that it's okay to get up. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm running out of air. So finally, I now I'm an expert swimmer. I pull my head out of the water. I go to take a breath of air, but that cold had affected my lungs and I couldn't get a good breath of air. So I swam over to the, the ramp 
and I grabbed the ramp and I stood up. That was when I realized I was in about three and a half feet of water. I could have stood up at any time. <laughs> what an idiot. So they check the, they check everything, send me home. I'm shivering. I got about a 30 minute ride home. I took a hot shower, changed my clothes, drove home. I got home, took another hot shower, and I didn't warm up till I got in bed. So I come back Monday, Tim Burton goes, hey, Trav, we want to get a little different angle. You up for me hitting the water again? I went, sure. The only problem is, I now know how cold that water is. He goes, well, no, it's colder. Oh, no. Because it dropped by like three or four degrees over the weekend. So. Was that in a studio? Did it again. Was it in a studio or was it like a an actual? It was on the water stage at Universal. Okay. Now, mostly shot that movie at Warner Brothers. but. Universal has this big water stage. I mean, they've shot so many famous movies there. So they built the set there. And, you know, had water. Penguins used to come in every day and they'd walk them in, let them swim for an hour, pull them out, take them back to their beds. One weekend, I took my wife and my kids so they could see the penguins on a Saturday. So it was really cool. Yeah, it's amazing that they allowed people to do that. I feel like now it would be a lot more strict. You know, that, that movie, when we had the, um, the uh, rap party, my wife and I, one of my buddies, Rick Zumwalt, he played the... Uh, strong man he's a buddy of mine and uh we were we were coming into where the rap party was and talking to people as you get in the door my wife gets way late way late she's talking to this guy for like 35 minutes so she finishes her talk and come on let's go into the party more. She goes, who was that I was talking to? <laughs> that was Batman, dear. <laughs> oh, Michael Keaton. She had no idea. Oh, the Great. best Batman. I think. She, uh, he actually was doing um, the pro celebrity rodeo. And my wife, I, I was doing security there. <laughs> She was sitting down um, in one of the rows and he drove by and he, hey, Chris Ann, how are you? <laughs> and didn't realize, you know, that I was, he didn't realize I was in the movie. Danny DeVito did the same thing. I was working for Bruce Springsteen at the sports arena in LA. And they said, hey, Danny DeVito's over there. His daughter works for Bruce. Can you walk him backstage? I said, sure. So I come over and I go, hey, Danny, how are you? And he didn't even blink, didn't even acknowledge that he knew me. So I walked him back and I told my buddy, I go, he goes, no way. I go, yeah. So I go to get him and his wife and I'm going to walk him out to their limo. And he comes out and I and I go, you ready to go to your limo? He's looking at me and I go, yeah, I go, Travis McKenna. I, I was the fat clown in Batman Returns. Oh my gosh, Travis, he goes, Rhea, this is one of my guys. <laughs> he goes, I didn't recognize you before because I've never seen you out of your makeup. You know, because my face was all painted. Right, and I was right. in that ridiculous costume. So it was nice to get a little, you know, acknowledged. A little, little recognition, yeah. You, know, you work for Bruce? I go, yeah. 
Nice. Small world, nice. small world. It is. It is. Well, I really want to. I really want to get this book when you write it. You write it. Well, I'm. You know, hopefully, I'll get it out there before I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I have total faith that you will. <laughs> I. You know, I've been joking to people for years. My my tagline for you know when everybody goes man you've really been through a lot my tagline is ain't nothing gonna kill me but me you know i've been saying that for years you got nine lives um i think i've used up 10 of them well yeah it's working overtime now yeah so you know it's not your time it's not your time that's right that's exactly right certainly attempted fate numerous times you know shot stabbed west nile virus um six or seven concussions i got no curve in my neck three herniated discs in my low back now i'm missing a leg had you know had a stroke so it's not my time yet that's right. Well, I, I'm glad you're still here, and and I'm really glad we've been able to talk today. I mean, it's this has me meant too. the world to me being able you to know, talk to you. The funny thing, you know, the funny thing about all this, it ain't me. You know, it's God. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent. God's been looking out for me, but I've had a, I have had an amazing life, and you know, I've done things I never dreamed of. You know. Who would have thought a kid from Lutheran, Maryland, come out to LA, start working with the greatest rock stars in the world, doing that kind of work, and then gets in the movie business, is on TV, gets into a commercial, gets nominated for an Emmy, you know, gets in one of the most iconic movies of all time, Roadhouse, does what I think is an amazing Batman movie. It's one of my favorites. It's you the know. Best. Aside from the original. Get on a TV show that I worked on coach with Craig Nelson and, you know, Jerry Van Dyke. You know, I I don't think I could have written a better story. I don't think so. Well, I think our, I think our chat's going to cut off again. Um, I just wanted to let you know before it completely cuts off. But it was a uh, thank you to you and, thank you for uh reaching out i i was glad that you know we got to do this i am too i really am and uh i'd love to talk to you more whether or not we're doing zoom or not um absolutely love to hear, always i always love to hear more stories always interested and uh i'll send you the link to this video and the other one i made when i get it when i get it ready hey i'd love to see it thank you ever thank so you. much thank you very much and you have a great rest of your day and thanks for talking you too, all right, have a good one.